bathtub. This happens every once in a while, but oh my God, it is so special and luxurious. And I thought that I would bring you guys along with me. And today is particularly special because it is a hair wash day. Mm. I wanna do a huge thank you to our sponsor today, Function of Beauty. I am still using the Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner. I've been using it for several months now and I've been loving my results. They're a personalized hair care system that caters to your hair type. I would say hair care is quite similar to skincare in the sense that not everyone is gonna have the same solution for everything. Like every hair type, every skin type is unique. So I love that with Function of Beauty, you're able to customize everything. So the process is super simple. You just take a quick two minute quiz and give them all the info about your hair type, your hair goals, and personalized preferences like color and fragrance. You can also get to choose the name on your bottle. And mine says Jen because it belongs to moi. So my personal hair profile was straight, short, and normal hair. And the goals I had was to hydrate, strengthen, anti-frizz, shine, and thermal protection because you know, I love my hot tools. I love styling my hair. I went ahead and picked the seafoam shade again because this is my signature color. And I also stuck to the same fragrance, which is Perfection. Oh my God, it smells incredible. If you like sweet and fruity, this is gonna be your jam too. And it's made me extremely loyal to this scent. If you order now, there's a new fragrance called Isn't She Bubbly? And that's like a champagne and citrus scent. And also if you order, they have a brand new sticker pack, which is winter themed, super festive. My hair has been feeling so much more silky and it's grown quite a bit since August. I am going to leave a link in my description box for you to get 20% off your first order of Function of Beauty. So definitely pop that open. And now I feel like my conditioner has been in here for a while. So let's rinse off. I always feel so pumped when it is the first day of the month. I think it's because it's a fresh start. I feel like I'm starting over. This is when I get to do my brand new bullet journal spread. So this is my cover art for December. And before you're extremely impressed by my dwarves, I literally just copied this off Pinterest. Like, look, they're everywhere. But on the second page, we've got my habit trackers. These are the seven things that I'm tracking. Over here, we've got if I worked out, if I ate healthy, if I cleaned Cheeky, I like her eyes especially, if I flossed. I also like this new addition, which is my period. This is the month where, this is the week where I can kind of expect when my period's about to come. Like I like to have this visual reference because honestly, the week before my period, I just become so incredibly irritable. And it took me up till this year to realize, oh my gosh, if I just write it down and I see it, now I've got like a, a head start, like a, a warning. The week before my period, I'm just not, I'm just not very pleasant. But strangely enough, now that I'm aware of it, it's actually made me more pleasant. So this has really been working out for me. Got a little section for reading. And this is if I read and take notes. So this is like if I've engaged with the book that I'm currently reading. So whether that's taking notes or transferring my notes onto Notion, that's when I will circle the little date. And the last one, we've got stretch. This one is the one I always struggle with each month. Like there's something about stretching where I just like want to defy it, like I don't want to do it. And I think that's just proof that I need to do it more. Ben actually has a really amazing stretching routine, which I'll show you guys later this month. So yeah, these are the goals for my December. Also, I'm very proud of my weekly spread. I've gone for a very festive candy cane theme. This actually took a lot longer <laughs> than expected. This really gets me in the holiday spirit. So I'm happy about that. Right, guys. All right guys, this is the makeup look today. It's like a sparkly orange look. I feel like in the past I was always like, let's experiment with color. Let's try the greens, let's try the blues. Um, but I realized I just always come back to orange. It's just my favorite shade. Um, I've been experimenting with ColourPop's Jelly Much Shadow. It looks like that. It's just like a bit, a bit of clay. So today I am going to be filming and I'm gonna be doing a book video. And it's interesting, like I feel like the people who watch my book videos are different than the people who watch 
my vlog channel. It's kind of interesting, but I feel like when I wear too much makeup in my book videos, I feel like it may deter some viewers being like, this girl doesn't know what she's talking about. She's got full glam. What the heck? The thing is, I've also tried just like a more natural look in the past and I feel like it was more widely received. I've gone somewhere in the middle with this makeup look today. It's not too glam, but it's not no makeup either. So we'll see how this fares. Maybe I'm just thinking too much into it. It's 118. I finished filming my book video. This is always such a great feeling to be able to just cross that off my list. If you guys want to watch the video where I talk about each one of these books and why I like them, uh, head on over to the cards. I always point the wrong way. So I'm just going to go like this because one of them must be right. I decided on wearing this lovely little chunky whimsical cardigan from Hope McCauley. I am so happy that it's finally gotten to a temperature where wearing a chunky cardigan makes sense. Like y'all, I got this at the height of summer. Like it was July. It was like over a hundred degrees. It just didn't make sense. But now I'm glad that I can wear it without burning to a crisp. shop, our frantic shop at the Korean market. It was frantic but successful. It was very successful, it was much needed. We haven't been to the Korean Mart in a long time. There's always things we want to get, like the dumplings, the mozzarella sticks. Mm -hmm. There's always things that, you know, it's been a while since we've had them. Very excited. Yeah. And look what we got here. We got these konjac jelly packs. I always see these in like Korean what I eat in a day videos. And now I finally get to try it. So it's basically like a little jelly pack that's only six calories. Six calories. Six calories. And I chose the mango flavor. There you go. Thank you. Hold on, I wanna open, I'll try mine too. Okay, all right, cheers. Cheers, babe. Mm. Right? If it was chilled. So this is great. Mmm. 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 That doesn't taste like a, a what you would expect a six calorie meal to taste like. No. It's great. It's just like jelly. It is. It's really sweet. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Freeze it for a better taste. I was thinking whether freeze would work, but how would it come out? Oh. You just have to let it cool a bit, a bit be like slushy. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is really mm. good. We got hot box them as well. Oh, I want to try more other flavors now. Mm. Ooh, got lots of good stuff today. I think I'll do a little grocery haul from the Korean Mart. All right, so here is the first batch of veg. We've got some kale, green onions, bok choy, tomatoes, a zucchini, a cucumber, some sesame leaves, and a bell pepper. Here's another bundle of veg. We've got an eggplant, which we're gonna use for some buns, potatoes for soups and shepherd's pie for tonight, celery for celery juice, two onions, and a head of broccoli. I've got two packs of tofu. This is actually my favorite brand. We've got some whole white mushrooms, some California oyster mushrooms, and pine nuts for Ben. For seafood, I got the salmon sashimi, which I'm gonna have in a bowl later this week, and I got this tuna, which is perfect for making kimchi jjigae, my favorite soup. I got organic brown rice in short grain form. I just find that short grain rice is just juicier and more moist, and it just tastes better to me. 
And then I also have my glass noodles for my chapche. Okay, so here is the fun frozen section. This is the reason why we went. We love to get an assortment of vegetable dumplings. We've never tried this brand, but I just like to have a little mix to see what we like. We also got a cheese dog with fish cakes. Honestly, the ones without the fish cakes actually taste a lot better, but this was our only option, so that'll do. I also got this uh, sundubu jangpong packet, which I'm very excited to make. And then over here, we've got some jajangmyeon for Ben. This looks slightly less processed than this one, but these are just nice to have on hand when Ben is in the mood for this. Oh, and I also got um, gennip. This is like a marinated perilla leaf, and it's so freaking good. I love to have it with rice. More miscellaneous things. We've got a pack of coffee. We've got soy sauce. This is the only brand of soy sauce that I really love. And I think it's because I just grew up using the soy sauce and uh, it's just become a legacy thing for me. Got some rice vinegar and then this uh, smashed up garlic because I'm lazy sometimes. And these are the jelly packets that Ben and I were eating in the car. Mango flavor is delicious and I believe it comes in a pack of 10. So pretty sweet. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. So I'm gonna make myself some lunch. We're gonna be making jajangmyeon. Wow, okay. I literally just boil the noodles and then add the sauce. It does not get any more simple than that. Wow. Delicious. Now I was just looking at it, but it was bringing me so much joy. Mmm. Mmm. It's pretty the good. The noodles are so congealed a bit. Congealed, yeah. It's, the flavor is good. Yeah. I feel like if we used our own noodles, it would be good. Yeah. The flavor is nice. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Hit the spot. Mm -hmm. Should you have the zucchini? Mm -hmm. Wow. No. Onion. It's 4.55 and I've got five minutes until I do my live video call with everyone in my book club. It's always like a pretty intimate group. We select 20 to 25 people. So November's book pick was The Best We Could Do by T. Bui. And this was such an incredible illustrated memoir. It's about T. Bui's family and how they immigrated to the United States. So T's parents had to escape Vietnam once the south of Vietnam collapsed and there was just the war going on. There was just no opportunity there. So they fled Vietnam and then they started a new life in America, which just had its own bundle of problems. Like when you're displaced and when you have the weight of war and conflict, it definitely will affect the way you raise your children. I think a lot of us have expectations about what a parent should or shouldn't do. And I think these roles and these expectations are what kind of create a lot of disappointment and, and cognitive dissonance. When the author finally became a mom, that's when she really asked the, the right questions to ask her parents and it gave her so much more context of what her parents went through and that her parents did the best that they could do. I should probably get into the Zoom call right now. A lot of folks maybe get passed down wealth or jewelry, but instead, um, with a lot of immigrants and refugees, there's inter you know, intergenerational trauma. A in a day. Oh my god. We're watching Anthony Bourdain, No Reservations, Season 7, Episode 1, Haiti. It feels weird seeing it. Obviously, because he passed away. How is it? It's okay. The salad. We got some shepherd's pie tonight we made. Look at that, nice bit of shepherd's pie. It's very hard to handle it this way, but there we are. Wow, that's great. Dude, you really did a great job mashing. That's 
Yeah, it's good enough. Wow. We're ready for din dins. Alright, thank you, babe. Cheers, babe. It's a good day. It's a good day. Tuss. Tuss. Short for to us. To us. Wow. Tuss. Thank you so much for making dinner. Of course, babe. You had your uh, curl up club. How was it? I did. It was really, really good. Uh, we talked about the book, um, The Best We Could Do. And it's all about like family and immigration. Mm. And it was extremely, everyone was really open, which I really appreciated. That's Cause good. it was like, when you read this book, it, it just makes you see your parents as independent beings. Because a lot of times we see like our parents as like mom or dad. Mm. And there's that, that role that hangs over it. It's very hard oh. to break out from that because it's what you know, it's what you've only known. Mm -hmm. So any relationship with your parents is very hard to change because it's what you know and you get stuck with that. So Exactly. One of the questions was, um, how would you change your relationship with your parents? So those are the kind of questions that we asked wow. and talked about. What so. did you say? I think it's to be more patient. Yeah. That's the thing. Because I think with our parents, or the, especially with my parents and my family, that's when I'm the most comfortable and they see the best sides of me, but they could also see the, the, the sides where I'm not trying. And if something that happens where it upsets me, it, it's, it's difficult to control my temper, mm -hmm. especially because I learned my temper from them. So, sorry, that's your no fault, shame. Parents. It's your fault. Your fault, I'm shouting your at you fault. right now. I'm fucking pissed. No, but really, um, it just makes me want to be more patient with my parents. You can't change other people, but you can change how you react. And like Very the, true. It cuts holes in, in New Earth. He said one of the best exercises to do to be aware of your conditioned um, kind of traits is to be with your parents. Because mm -hmm. like you don't... I'm lucky because they're 5,000 miles away. So when I do go see them, it's a new kind of... I appreciate that time more mm -hmm. than you would if they were down the road mm -hmm. or if you live with them. So it's like, see those habits. Cause people are like, they'll be with their friends or they'll be sort of making a good effort at work mm -hmm. and they see the parents and they just speak Unravel. to them probably the same they did when they were 16, 15, going through hormone changes and very mm -hmm. angry and hate the world. So it's, uh, I mean, it's a really important thing. So anyone watching right now, next time you, you see your parents, just, just treat them some love, you know? Cause it's probably not easy living with you guys either. And oh. you guys as in us and you know, us, the children. What would you change about the relationship with your parents? Um, probably be a bit more open and I think we have been more open because my parents aren't the type to be they're not confrontational we didn't ever have that much like deep conversations mm. and I realized especially since moving over here if I push those conversations we'll have them and it's great so I think again it comes back to like me moving 5,000 miles away you kind of weirdly get closer to your family because you yeah you really cherish it you might only have a week and it might be a year till you get to see them again. So you're not just going to yell at them and be a, be moody and go mm -hmm. up to a room. You're gonna you're gonna cherish it, and kind of uh, and obviously you you know you appreciate things you want to tell them. And I think um, mine would be to try and be more even go even deeper and even more um, uh, like that. I think I've got past that, and I think I'll just keep telling them how grateful I am because I am very grateful and you, again you don't really speak about that when you're young it's a weird mm -hmm. thing to go oh mum and dad just to let you know I'm really grateful for you it doesn't really mm -hmm. happen for everything you do yeah. you provide food for me and my shelter and my yeah. education and wow this is really good by the mm -hmm. way Christmas tree the crown popcorn nice cream nice cream we call it it's not ice cream it's nice, nice cream, cream. Mm.